Let's take a look at an example of an optimization problem. Suppose we want to go into the soda business. So we're going to sell 12 ounce cans of soda. So our goal is to find the dimensions of the can that uses the least amount of material to build. Put another way, we want to find the dimensions of the can that has the smallest surface area possible. Obviously, the surface area depends on quantities R, the radius of the can, and H, the height. Now, 12 ounces, if you do a little search, is 355 cubic centimeters. So we'll switch units, and then we can measure all our dimensions in centimeters. Now, the volume of a can is going to be the area of the base, pi r squared, multiplied by the height. So in this case, the volume has to be 355 cubic centimeters. This equation is called a constraint. It's something that relates R and H. You can't just choose the radius and the height willy-nilly. They have to be related to each other by this equation. Now, one of the consequences of this is you can choose one of the variables to be something, and then the other one is forced to be a function of it. In this case, for example, the height is going to be 355 divided by pi r squared. Once you choose the radius, the height is a function of radius. So let's get into this question of surface area. What's the surface area of the can? Well, you can peel away the side into a rectangle, and you'll notice that the width of that rectangle is going to be equal to the circumference of the top of the can. So that width is going to be 2 pi times the radius r. And the height is obviously h, so the area of the side is simply 2 pi r h. Now, of course, you have the top and the bottom taken together. That's 2 uh, pi r squareds. So, so when we add these together, you're going to get the total surface area, which is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So we'll put the surface area formula off to the side. Now, we want to figure out how to make this surface area as small as possible. What we need to do is find some variable we can tune, some parameter that we have control over, and then we're going to find the surface area in terms of that parameter. Well, we've already got h in terms of r, so let's try to substitute here. We'll take h equals 355 over pi r squared. We'll substitute that right into h, and we get this formula for the surface area. We can do a little cancellation here, simplify it, and we get this nice formula for surface area as a function of r. So the natural question is, what is the domain? If you were to just go by the formula, all real numbers except r equals zero work, but we have an application in mind. We don't want negative radius, so we can think of r as being small. In fact, we make it close to zero, and you'd get this sort of skyscraper-like tube, and you can increase r, and of course the height has to decrease because the volume has to stay the same at 355 cubic centimeters. So r can be actually as big as you like, and of course the height would have to get close to zero in that case. So, in fact, any positive R works in theory. Of course, some of these cans would be awfully hard to build. But the domain of our function in this optimization problem is definitely the open interval from zero to infinity. Now, if we plot A as a function of the radius R, we get a graph that looks like this. And you can see here, as R goes to infinity, we get the manhole covers. And as R approaches zero from the right, we get the tubular skyscrapers. And we're interested in finding this point right here where the area is amen. We want to find the value of the radius for which the surface area is as small as possible. Obviously, we're going to want to look for the critical number where the tangent slope is zero in this graph. Um, unfortunately, this is not a continuous function on a closed interval. If it were, we have a very nice algorithm. We just crank out the recipe for such a problem. Find the critical numbers, plug in the endpoints, look at the values, boom, we're done. So our, our analysis in this case is going to have to be somewhat more sophisticated, although in this problem it's really not that bad. So here we are with the original function. We take the derivative to find the critical numbers. Now we could just set this equal to zero and work from there. But let's rewrite this as one fraction. There's going to be an advantage of doing this. So here is our formula for the derivative written as one fraction. And we need our sine analysis of a prime. Now we have this domain, the open interval from zero to infinity. That's where we want to do the sine analysis. Now we'll notice that r squared is positive when r is greater than zero. And that means that we could ignore r squared for the purposes of the sine analysis. In other words, it's enough to analyze 4 pi r cubed minus 710. 
So in order to do that, let's just put back the rest of our graph here. This is what a simple cubic looks like. This would be the graph of 4 pi r cubed. And if you subtract 7, 10 from that, we're going to shift it down. So this is our quick sketch of the numerator function in our formula for a prime. Now there's only one root, and that's easily calculated. It's the cube root of 7, 10 over 4 pi, which is about 3.8. Now, recalling that we really only care about the analysis from 0 to infinity, this quick sketch tells us that the sine of the numerator, and therefore the sine of a prime, goes from being negative to positive across this critical number that we found. That's our sine analysis of a prime. And there is our critical number, the site of our local minimum. A is decreasing on the open interval from 0 to r star and then increasing on r star to infinity. Now if we go back to the original graph and think about what we just did, we just figured out that on this interval from 0 to r star, the graph is decreasing and then from r star to infinity it's increasing. So not only is this a local min, it is the absolute minimum on the whole domain. So to minimize the surface area, we should choose the radius to be this quantity, which is about 3.837. And then, of course, the height can be determined in terms of our star, and it would be about 7.674. Now, as a postscript, you might notice that this can appears to be pretty squat. The diameter and the height are comparable, which means you'd be holding something more, more akin to like a block than a can. And in fact, a modern soda can is far narrower. And in fact, it's not a simple cylinder. It's beveled. It has uh, inner radius of about 2.7 centimeters and outer radius of 3.3 centimeters. And the height, therefore, because it's a smaller radius, obviously has to be greater. So it's about 12.3 centimeters in a standard can. So it appears that soda manufacturers are not trying to minimize surface area. It would seem that perhaps they are trying to maximize something a little more abstract, namely customer satisfaction.